Travis. I no. Okay. Or and, is Becky on? And Becky or Rebecca? Okay. One of them, wasn't it Rebecca had surgery or something today? Yes. Yep, you're right. Rebecca Hopper did. Yep. So there's two. I think we get rolling. It is 7.05. Mm -hmm. And um, we can move forward. We have five board members present. So we do have a quorum. And we will bring, okay. so Denise, you're in charge. So yeah, so this is my first virtual stepping in as chair, so just bear with me. But um, no can I do a roll call at the beginning or? Yes, you can do a roll call of, of the board members present. Yep, or okay, so, find out present. Okay, so Becky Beal is not here. Uh, Linda Corliss? Hi, Denise, I'm here. Just one note, if you're gonna do a vote and you're looking for a quorum, I can only stay about until about 8.10. Then oh, you? We'll be good, Linda, I promise. Okay. <laughs> um, so, no, Travis Dwyron? No? No. Nope. Okay. Um, Rebecca Hopper? No. Lynn Manley? Lynn is here. She needs to unmute to let us know. Yes, I'm here. I unmuted instead of muting. I mean, <laughs> or vice versa. <laughs> All right. uh, Nancy Newbert? Yes. And Joanne Potter here and me Denise Mallet here so okay so for the public input Nancy is uh, helping out tonight okay uh, the first public input session is a 15 minute session with each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement but a second public input session may be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by the board chair the speaker will give his, her name, address, and reason for speaking. Public input is designated for district residents, but again, the board chair may grant non-residents the opportunity to address the board. Statements concerning subject matter that falls under the law regarding executive sessions cannot be made during public input. For example, any matters involving personnel. Thank you. So, Calling for public input? No, but that was explained better than I usually hear it. So I don't know if there's a different voice explaining that rule tonight. <laughs> well done, Nancy. I, I take that personally. You should <laughs> take offense to that, Ms. Mallon. That's, and, and, and Mr. Dwyron from the past. No, it was for Travis. That was for Travis. Travis only. I Travis so only. for a year and reading the exact same words. But <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> Mike, you should just mute yourself right now and be done with it. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm glad there's one reliable Roberts here tonight and not uh, not two. All right. I'll be, I'm good. Thank you. All right. Good. <laughs> okay. Goodbye. Yeah. Um, Jen, is there anybody in public input at this point? Okay. Excellent. All righty. Um, so, Denise, you're ready? Yeah. Minutes of the May 21st meeting. Without Becky present, we're going to have to really uh, <laughs> look a little <Yeah>. closer. <laughs> I'd like a motion, to, I'd make a motion to accept the minutes. This is Joanne. Thank you. A second. I'll second the motion. This is Linda. Thank you, Linda. Okay. All right, so Sue, would you like to explain the next, probably three, right? Are these sort of all- Yeah, hold on though, you need to take your vote. Oh, okay. So you got to pull your pull your roll back up and just run through those. Really okay, quick. it'll be quick. Um, okay, Linda oh. Portland, do you accept that? Yes. Manley. Oops. Was that a yes for Lynn? I'm not. I think she was unmuted again. She's muted again. So Lynn, are you in favor? Yes, I'm. Yes, I'm in favor. Thank you. Oh, and Becky's here. Uh, I am. I'm sorry to be late. Okay, so Becky is here, and um, do you did you take a look at the minutes? I did. They're fine. Okay, um, and Nancy Newbert, yes. Joanne Potter, yes. And me, Denise Mallet, yes. Okay. Thanks for joining, Becky. Good to see you. Oh, uh, sorry, we had a barbecue going on. <laughs> You're all good. No worries. Okay. So. 
I, Denise, I will take over for the next three, which are, there's three agenda items, four, five, and six, but our attorney did a great job of rolling them all into one motion. So I shared, I hope, I don't know if everybody saw it, but I did send out an email that has mm -hmm. the motion in it. If anybody would like to see it. Um, but basically what it does, because we're going to, we have been told that we cannot have a typical budget meeting that we normally have. It's a mandatory requirement that we go remote. So we have to rescind the vote from before that says that we're going to do it in such and such a way on such and such a day. And then we also need to, um, we have to call the warrants back and we have to call the vote back. So that's the first part of this vote. The second part of the vote is to send it back out to approve the revised budget format, which is that we're going to do this virtual budget meeting, um, very similar to how we're doing our regular board meetings, um, setting up opportunities for people to ask questions about certain items. Um, I think we are in a place where we're, it, currently it looks like um, there'll be four major questions, which is the big budget piece, the adult ed piece, the, um, the food service piece, and then the fact that we typically are asking above what um, the essential programs and services offer to us. So I don't know that we're, and as we're processing through this, we're working with the attorneys about the exact format when we come down to it, but it is generally going to be um, not an actual vote, but a time to comment and ask questions. And then this document then will go forward for our vote on July 14th. Does that make sense? I know it's kind of weird. So the, um, the vote on the 14th will be to validate the budget? No, yes, okay. it'll be a regular referendum vote on that on the 14th. Yep. So what happens typically at the budget meeting is people have an opportunity to make changes, right? Mm -hmm. This is not necessarily that. It's going to be more of an opportunity to comment and, and let the board know their thought process. Okay. Um, <coughs> historically, we've had very little changes to the budget as we've been going through the, ref the budget meeting process anyways. Um, but that's due to the situation that we're living in. This is what we have to offer at this point. Uh, because it has a mandated that we not hold the budget referendum, I mean the budget meetings. Right. So what happens is that this particular, and this also includes the SRF bond funds. So we're rescinding all of that first initial one that we agreed to, and we're going to then call for a vote to approve the revised budget format, the warrants, the call for the vote, and the vote to call the board referendum, so the referendum piece. And it's all in one clean motion uh clean i guess it's really wordy <laughs> so I ask a question sure nancy go um so we're still doing this virtual meeting on the 23rd right yes okay yeah yeah so this is basically we're gonna do our budget meeting but it's gonna be virtual with some minor changes on formatting and stuff hopefully people will feel comfortable calling in and asking questions they haven't been super forthcoming on public input, but you know, that it is, it's, it's just the times that we're in right this minute, I guess, as we so work the, through So the, will the towns vote like we usually do or not? I, at this point, as I'm reading things as I am, it does not look like we're calling for votes. It's only a time at this point for people to call in with comments and questions. Okay. The actual vote will be on July 14th. Okay. So, does that, I, it's, so it does eliminate that kind of double, double voting process. Okay. But it does continue I to provide really, comment and question time. Yeah, and I think based on the feedback, we'll know. If we need to make some changes. Yeah. Right, right, right. All right, and then. What is, what is the, um, I don't know if we have any idea how many people might be expected, but would it be, what is the format of that meeting? Would it be like a Zoom meeting where people are on video or it would, is, is there a way that maybe we could have somebody in technology actually kind of, you know, 
help us make sure that it goes smoothly. <laughs> if the, if there if we are expecting more than, um, you know, more than right. a night like this. Um, we'll work with Terry, but I mean, I think that the the in order for it to be as public as it can be, we need to continue with the BCTV piece of it and with the Zoom um, platform is my thought process. So we'll, yeah, it's, it, it's not ideal for all of our, our communities, right? Um, but it is an opportunity. We still send it out to everybody in our, you know, it's listed that you can come into the meeting and all that kind of stuff. So I think it's, I'm not sure exactly how to change that format too much, Denise. Um, okay. But, you know, we have, today's the fourth, we've got 19 days to maybe tweak a little bit if we feel like there's some things that we need to do differently. Um, <laughs> can't see me, there we go, okay. <laughs> Denise is like, she's critiquing me tonight. I'm like, all right, I'm in, let's move that way. Okay, I'm sure Terry appreciates that now too. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so, so other questions or thoughts about that? Okay, I mean, it's definitely awkward. It's just a different way. And as this is, all of this whole thing has been a little bit awkward, right? Sue, can I ask a quick More question? Than a little bit. Of course. <laughs> Jamie, so, um, Will town uh, members be able to see a copy of the budget like they typically do? Will it get mailed out or will it just be virtual? No, we're, um, we are actually in the process of, they're, they're almost to print, and they'll be in everybody's mailbox, just like always. So the report will go out just like it always has. Perfect. Thank Perfect. you for bringing that up, actually, because yeah. that was something I was going to say. Um, can the Zoom meeting link go on that? Is that possible? Oh, it's, um, it's already printed. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Well, probably not, but you never know. So we'll see what kind <laughs> of miracles we can pull off. But it is on all of the documents that are going out to the towns and posted oh, and we'll put it on our website. So everything will be up. Um, the website probably be the easiest place to go, that it's clearly there. Um, as soon as we approve this or we make the motion tonight, the documents will go onto the, the website very clearly marked. You won't have Thank to look for them. Yeah. All right, anybody else? So what we're looking for is someone to read that motion that I emailed out, if anybody can find it. I've got it if you want me to read it. This is Nancy. You go, Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. Okay, I moved that the vote entitled, vote to rescind budget meeting, budget validation referendum, and bond referendum, call a district referendum for budget, and bond approval, call a public hearing, approve the referendum warrants, and approve the notice of public hearing, be approved in form, presented to this meeting, and that a copy of said vote be included, included with the minutes of this meeting. Right. Okay. Are there any questions or discussion? <laughs> that's excellent wordsmithing. <laughs> I, that's what we pay our attorneys for. <laughs> Uh, I'll second that motion. This is Joanne. Thank you. And uh, so all in favor, Becky? Yes. Linda Corliss? Yes. Lynn Manley? Yes. Nancy Newbert? Yes. I'm meeting. Diane Potter? Yes. And me, Denise Mallet? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, you guys. All right, um, Darcy, you're up. All so, right. Darcy so, Goulet's sabbatical presentation. So first I just wanna um, thank the board for allowing me to have this opportunity. Uh, I've been teaching, I don't know really how long, about 28 years. And at Noble, this I think is my 19th year. Um, and I just had a lot of stuff go on in my life and I just really needed to get it away a little bit and reflect on um, and just take some me time so that I could give my all to my students because the reason I teach is because I just love the kids. I get such a kick out of them and I wasn't getting the kick out of them that I wanted. And so this was a great opportunity for me to just take care of me and really want to get back into what I love doing. So my, my, 
proposal was as a PE teacher, we really don't have at this time at Noble a K through or at, in SAD 60, a K-12 sequential curriculum, um, at least in writing. We have something that we're all doing, but there's nothing that's like there that you can say, oh yeah, this is this unit or anything like that. And what made me really think about it was we had a new phys ed teacher come in two years ago when Stacy Bradburn left and he's like, what do you guys do? And, and what we could do, because we've been working on standards education at the high school and uh, have been putting all that work together, we have it all and we can say, this is what we're doing. This is what we do. This is how we evaluate. This is how we assess our kids. And so it made me think like it was really nice for him to be able to study this and just look at it. It doesn't dictate how you teach or anything like that. And of course, it's a living document that is constantly changing because we reflect on everything as we teach and change it up a little bit and try to make improvements. So I was thinking that, you know, it would be really nice if we had something K-12, and I just really love working on curriculum, believe it or not, that we could have that we could be really proud of as a department, as a, as a district of our K-12 phys ed curriculum. Because in my other districts that I've worked in, I've worked in New York State and I was over at Spalding for a while. We have these K-12 curriculums that are put together, they're sequential, and it kind of shows what our focus is and our goals are. So that's kind of what I presented. Another thing that Steve had requested that I look into um, was an online option for physical education or an alternative option. I wasn't really on board with that because, you know, hey, I want you in my class, plus I get feedback from kids. But um, I did throw that in and I did some work on that as well, especially with this distance learning piece that we've been going through. So the first thing that I did for this was I met with Allie um, Kearney and Heidi Early because Heidi was really kind of directing what, the work we were doing. And um, Allie was so instrumental at the high school level in leading our curriculum work. She is just so articulate and thoughtful in the way that she helps you to plan things and is able to break things down very, very well. So. Um, I went to her just because I tend to get bogged down in detail and I didn't want to do that. And so I went to them for guidance and, and uh, just to help me with that. And so then what I, my goal was to create that scope, that entire big document that I had. Did you all get it from Jen? The big document with the, the whole curriculum map, K-12. And so my goal with that was to really see what we were focusing on and plug in everything that we have digitalized and put it in there so we can see where we're standing. Because I wanted to do a curriculum map and then a gap analysis to see where we needed to go. And so with that, I found that, you know, we all have some kind of limitations going on in our departments in our areas and we are really disconnected. I know that it used to be pretty disconnected per town at the elementary level. And those, those, those guys have come together really incredibly well with that professional development time and they have a really good bond and they work well together. And so that was really awesome to see because you know, when you're divided by town, you kind of have that dissension of it's, you don't have to, but it somehow it works its way in, but they've worked through that and they, they really get along so well and, and work together really well. So I met with them first to see what they were working on. And they shared with me, they use this uh, reference book. It's a Shape America. It's our outcomes. It's the outcomes that we use. And it has all of our standards and it breaks everything down. And they pretty much live from this book, which is awesome because it tells you what to do. And so in that meeting, I you know asked some generalized questions again, which was kind of difficult because I didn't want them to go in there with them thinking I was judging them and I are critiquing anything that they did. So it was, it was, um, you know, cause nobody wants to be critiqued by their peer, you know, just because it's just one of those things when you're not ready for it. So um, I just kind of wanted to get a, a, see what they were doing and ask them to share everything they have so that I could plug in everything into that document in a place where it belongs 
so that I knew what their outcomes were or their goals were and how they were assessing and all that kind of stuff. I then met with the middle school teachers to see where they were and they were really readily like looking for information from me and, and help and guidance and structure, which was really cool. Um, I went back, we have an eighth grade, uh, Alex Sweat is at the eighth grade level at the high school and he's done a phenomenal job creating his unit plans, his UBD. So I went and I shared his with them so that they had an idea of what, you know, we were doing at the high school and a great format. It just was easy for us at the high school to use that format. Uh, and then both of them decided that they were going to retire, which kind of was like, oh my gosh, you know, that's kind of tough because ultimately my thought was if we could get something going so that new people coming in can have like something under their feet to get running with the curriculum um, and make it their so, own. That's my Darcy, just goal. so you know, just so you know, Rebecca's not retiring after all. Yeah, that's what I've that's heard. A good thing. <laughs> that is, that's a good oh thing. Oh my gosh, it's an amazing thing. So um, I was working on some of their stuff and trying to plug it in and seeing uh, they weren't all that familiar with the national standards. So I shared some resources with them and we kind of plucked out some ideas. You can see if you go to the middle school section, like more team sports and maybe a team ed kind of approach to middle school where in elementary school, they learn all the skills and the manipulative skills. And then at the middle school, they kind of start implementing them and they learn how to play it in a sport, like how to do a give and go and how to, you know, the whole team concepts go on at that middle school level. And then when we get to the high school, you know, we have, we've been working on it so long um, that our goal at the high school with our project adventure is really to work on the social emotional learning piece and the collaboration and all that kind of thing. And then in our second semester is to work on those lifetime skills. We do fitness then, teach them like why they're, why we want them to move and what's moving mean and what counts and all that kind of stuff. In addition to trying to find activities that they can pursue as adults and, and be vested in and, and hopefully keep them moving. So that was that document that I created and tried to plug things in. And, and as we move forward, my goal is to continually update it and it's shared with everybody so everybody can add comments, all of the teachers and, and hopefully buy in. After I completed that, I was able to start looking it over and that's when I started to do kind of like my gap analysis, but I didn't feel qualified to really do that. So I decided to take a course from uh, Shape America and the course was it went over the national standards and grade grade level outcomes it went over curriculum mapping it went over unit and lesson planning assessment strategies and instructional strategies i felt if i took the course that i would have far more you know understanding and it wouldn't just be my opinion like hey this is what we need to do i would have like some solid foundation to move forward so I then started with the curriculum mapping and just have like basic suggestions with regard to that, which is like starting at each level at the elementary level, they're trying to do so much. And the less is more approach is really, really important for them. That's what I've read in my, in the studies is the less is more is really a great approach for the elementary level phys ed where you don't need to teach them those basic skills every year. So you can, because if you have those same kids in kindergarten, you're gonna have them again in second grade. So if you have them in kindergarten and they're focusing on something here, you can have different structure and different plans as you move forward. So then I went and I bought an elementary curriculum book to make sure that I knew what I was talking about. And so that I could back that up. And I was just reviewing that and use that as a resource for that kind of a thought process where instead of them worrying about fitting all of that stuff say they meet with their first graders every Monday. And if they don't have a Monday of school, they miss that meeting that week. And so they get kind of compressed the amount of time that they have with kids. And so if they can, instead of having a three day unit, have a 10 day unit on these, like say locomotor skills with the lower levels, the K one, two, and then, you know, they would be able to have more time working on those developmental skills. And then they wouldn't be so worried about getting it all in. Um, and then I think maybe they should do a little uh, just assessing just to see, you know, as we move forward, as you move forward with your teaching, if, if you don't look and see if you're actually meeting your goals, then you don't know. Um, at the middle school, I, 
I was talking to Becky about it and she agrees that more of a sports type of curriculum would be great because then you take everything that those elementary teachers had in, had taught those kids and then you put it into play. And with that, it helps them to develop. The goal ultimately is to develop these physically, um, these kids that are, they're, they're physically able to do things so that they will be able to go out and be active. Uh, it's not to create athletes. It's just for them to be physically literate, as we like to say, so that they have the confidence in their ability to catch, to throw, to go out and play, you know, if their family's having a picnic, to go out and play volleyball and be able to work with their hand-eye coordination. Not that they have a perfect bump or a set, but just to be com comfortable in themselves. So with the middle school working on a sport ed type model, that was the kind of the goal that we ta I talked about with Becky and with Dave, and then we were gonna move from there. And at the high school, we're still evolving in, our, in and of ourselves. We've changed our project adventure curriculum quite a bit over the last two years to accommodate students and make it really more student driven. Uh, it became a fearful thing for a lot of kids mm. uh, thinking of the challenges and we've made it this opportunity for kids to be challenged where they're at. And for that, it's a personal challenge. My challenge isn't the same as your challenge. If you're a terrified of heights, no one's going to ask you to climb that ladder to the top. But if you can get on the bottom rung, we're going to cheer for you and celebrate because you just got over something and challenged yourself and didn't just stand there saying no. So, and then in addition to that, we're revising our second semester of, of uh, physical activity, which is our lifetime skills and trying to get kids involved in more activity that they can pursue outside of high school. So that's what we need to work on at the high school. Um, with all of that, what I did was I have still got friends out there. So I took some time and I connected with the people that I knew out in the world and tried to see what they were doing. And I uh, had a lot of them send me their curriculums and, and to see what they had, just, just to have an idea if I was in the right place, if people were going along those lines, because so much has changed over the years from when I first started teaching. And it seemed like it was pretty much aligned with the majority of people. Um, this spring, my goal was to get out into the classrooms and really observe. And, and because oftentimes we, we have this, you know, not all of us write down everything we do. And we certainly didn't have that at the high school until we had to with this whole standards-based education. So a lot of what you do isn't, isn't written down. So if I was in the classroom, I could take notes and then I could create stuff so that they could see what, what we're looking for in terms of, okay, so it, just give me an outline of that day. What did that day look like? What's your general everyday introduction to your class? Because if you do that every day, that's part of the social skills that we're working on. So every kid, when the first graders come in, what are their responsibilities? Do they come and sit in rows? Do they, so for me to observe all that and put it down, then what that does is it kind of builds on what they already have so that they can see that, oh yeah, this isn't so big. This isn't such a big deal to get this stuff written down. Um, and then I also wanted to take that time to go in and see, take pictures because I put up their learning targets, but they don't have everything in the same place. And, you know, with the lower levels, things are just a little bit different. Um, so that's what I had intended to do with my spring but it kind of got cut off. So I wasn't able to get into those classrooms. Um, so that's kind of what my curriculum building was and then we'll analysis. Does anyone have any questions about that? Uh, I have a question. Um, so it's like, it, that was, you just painted a great picture and then obviously it sort of ended with the you know, your plans for the spring semester and went, went. But actually, I, I wonder if given the last couple of months, if that, um, you know, and then looking forward, what did you learn in the last couple of months that would actually sort of steer you towards the future, knowing that we don't know what it's going to look like going forward? Do you, did that sort of, um, I guess what was your what was your thinking about every all of your conclusions that you had just come to and then all of a sudden knowing that everything is possibly up in the air. Yeah, well that was what's really was really quite I did a lot of 
you know, just for myself, because like I'm, a, like I had said, a hoarder of information. So I spent a lot of time online and uh, in different um, groups. I joined a bunch of uh, groups like on Facebook and all that kind of stuff. And I would share with those guys just to see, uh, just to see if I could find things that were interesting to them as we went forward. So for me personally, um, I would still, I, because everything like next year we have to do project adventure to start at the high school and project adventure is a co collaborative cooperative thing. And so we have to come up with a new, new way to meet those standards and really think out of the box. So these last few, you know, has real, everything I do has really changed in terms of how we can meet standards from this virtual base. Having not worked with elementary kids since I was like 23 has, you know, changed. I don't know, I don't know what's, how, what there's, what it was like for them working with their kids. Uh, at the middle school, again, I, I haven't been there for a very long time. So I, for me to like, to see what what they have learned and what how they would change things, it really made it quite difficult for me at the high school level, which kind of ties into how Steve wanted me to look into an opportunity for alternative phys ed outside of the high school. I had always thought of it as a online thing, and kids could just go to Planet Fitness and scan their card. One of my friends that I happened to connect with out in California, she works in it. She's the principal of an alternative school out there. And she runs an alternative phys ed program for one of her teachers who has invited me in. So I was able to look at her resources as a student and what the responsibilities are. And doing all of this, if there's an opportunity for like a hybrid type of online, because what this has taught me is these students today didn't choose online. It wasn't their choice. So that's why we're going with that do no harm approach. They didn't choose to all of a sudden have to do everything on their own. When, it when a student chooses the option to do things on their own, well, that was their choice. So if they're going to choose that, then it can be a little bit different kind of a format. I would prefer at the high school level, like a hybrid format. So they would have like a lab, I would call it, where uh, if they were in the fitness unit, then they would have to come in and they would have to maybe do fitness testing or they would come in so that I could teach them or, and observe them to make sure that they're doing things correctly. When we go to the lifetime skills, I could give them a badminton racket and a birdie to take home and they would have to research the different shots and then videotape themselves doing those things. Um, in for volleyball, I, I would look and say, okay, so your responsibility for volleyball is maybe some self-assessment or learn the skills and demonstrate them, but also to look where those opportunities are in the communities. Where as an 18 year old, where can you go? 17 year old, where can you go to play volleyball and join a team and, and go there like on Thursday nights to be active? So it really opened my eyes to the possibilities out there for that alternate way of learning and, and being a physical education teacher, which I never, ever, ever thought I would say, but um, I'm really glad that I've grown from it and am able to like really open my eyes and see the options out there. Does that answer your question? Yeah, very much. Good. I see, is this an all year, a full year proposal or a half year? It, no, this, she just, this is the past year. So I, I already had my sabbatical. Oh, you did? Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. Okay, so you're reporting out. Was I was thinking year. of it a totally different way. <laughs> That's awesome. awesome. You've done a lot of work. I, <laughs> did. I was like, why has she done so much if she's proposing this? <laughs> I missed Actually, that completely. Sorry. No, no problem. Um, so, where do we go from here? Well, pardon? Hi, Darcy. Um, this is Joanne. Where do we go from here? How, do, how does this get implemented into the, over the different grade levels now that you've completed this work? So here's my, so my goal is to meet with Susan, I don't know her last name, the new Heidi Early. Yes. Yeah. And so um, I'm going to meet with her when we get back to school and her with, and Allison, because it was also our high school curriculum review year for physical education. And I have some things that like, can help her to direct that because she's the administrator. I think that all we need to come up with a, to begin with an overall philosophical statement about phys ed. 
in at MS 8060, what is our goal overall to produce? What, what do we want our graduating student to look like? And then we need to really focus on each level. So K-5, what is your goal? What, what is your, what is the goal of those students? And then the whole uh, six through eight, the same thing. And then the high school, because as they go through, it, it shifts so much. Uh, I think that if, if I meet with Susan and we talk about it, I'm like, so on, I like, I love doing this work. I just would love to assist her and be a part of it any way that I can. Like, I'm even like offering like, I'll type up things if you just send them to me, record your voice and I'll do it. Um, just because I just, I just feel it's so important that we have this K-12 curriculum. And I think that it'll bring us together as a team, knowing that we're all a part of it and, and that we all are interrelated and we all have compassion for what the other person's doing and, and all that kind of thing. I, and so that's kind of my, my thought on it is, to bring us together, to have something that's it's sequential, it's founded and everything, and we all are owners of it, is what I'm, my goal is. And I'll be a part of it in any way I can. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Any other questions for Darcy? Thank you, that was great. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Darcy. So moving on to number eight, Sue, donation. Um, so this isn't something you need to vote on because it doesn't meet the maximum $500 or minimum $500 piece. Just wanted to let you know that Laura Cashel received a grant. Um, it, it's the diverse book finder. So it gives her opportunities to help find um, books to sort of look at the diversity issues out there in the world, the age appropriate, different levels. And she's going to take that and do some research and pull some things together for the um, bookmobile and also for our libraries as well. So I just wanted to let you know about that. Sue, would it make sense um, if she connected with the woman whose name I don't remember um, from North Berwick who had asked? Yeah. She could work yeah. with us on some diversity that might be yeah so um that's christine who's at the um the town office in okay. in north Berwick. she and i have had a lot of conversations but um and i've kind of she's um still working on resources and wanting to connect with us but she's had some things that have kind of held her back so yes i will definitely have laura involved with that as well it's a good idea all right. Anything else on that one, you guys? Thank you. Okay. Um, so approval for the superintendent to hire staff for the summer. Right. My only so question, every are we talking about Steve or Audra or both? <laughs> uh, it will it'll be Steve until June thirtieth, and then Audra from July one. Um, okay. So every year we get the. Um, approval of the board to be able to hire over the summer so that we're not as as the as things go forward and our board meetings become less frequent um, it's hard for us to wait until the board meets in order to offer the you know offer the, the seal the deal with our with our new staff so we typically get a vote that says you are authorizing the superintendent to hire for the months of and like basically we'll start Say tomorrow, June fifth through, um, well, I would just say August thirty first, just for ease. But we'll we'll be meeting prior to that to to get back to normal. So that's what we're looking for. Can I get a motion, or are there any questions? I, guess. I, I have a question. Um, I think in the past we had a we had we questioned as a board if it was just going to be. Um, the teaching staff and um, yes. support staff. And so not administrators, just um, teaching and support staff. Very good. I just wanted to make sure that we yep. clarify. Absolutely. Good, good clarification. Um, I'd like to make a motion to allow the superintendent to hire teaching and support staff um, during the summer months. I'll second that. This is Becky. Are you guys okay with the start date of June 5th, just to be clear? Because I want to make sure it's clear. Okay. 
Thank you. Um, okay, roll call. Becky Beal? Yes. Linda Corliss? Yes. Lynn Manley? Yes. Nancy Newbert? Nancy? You might be on mute. Yes, sorry. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Nancy, mute. you're so funny. Joanne Potter? <laughs> yes. And me, Denise Mallet, yes. Okay, thank you. All right. All right, exciting news about number 10. <laughs> so Melissa is in the house. Um, I'm gonna ask actually Audra to do the introduction of Melissa as our outgoing principal and incoming superintendent and give a little overview because she's had more time to meet with Melissa personally. So we'll go for there. Go ahead, Audra. Thanks. And then Sue will make the official nomination. So Melissa Roberts, who's right there. Hi, Melissa. Good evening. So we have, um, we're bringing Melissa forward as the principal for Hussey School, that position. And we had um, a few interview rounds with staff and Berwick board members and then the administrative team and quite a vetting process from there. And um, great references, really bringing some good experiences in from Waterboro. Um, her packet was included with your agenda, so I hope you had a chance to read it. So I won't go through it all, but um, Melissa has a great skill set that's going to fit really nicely in with the Hussey School, but also our administrative team. And as note, just note that Melissa is not related to Mike Roberts. Just pointing that out right there. Please note. Right. <laughs> just wanted to clarify that. And um, we're excited about this. And this, and if we go, if we move forward here, um, Melissa will be the third principal of Hussey School. This will be the third principal. That's pretty amazing when you think about the longevity piece there. So Melissa, you are in for the duration. <laughs> kind of how it rolls. All right. Does anybody have questions for Melissa? She did unmute herself. So if you have anything you want to ask, now's the time. Put her on the spot. Oh, you're so kind. I love I don't it. have any questions, but I, I was able to sit in on the interviews and I just want to echo what Audra said. It's I'm very excited and Melissa, I think you're going to bring a great um, skill set and passion to that school. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you for the administrative team and the school board, you all. The couple of interview teams that I met with, it was been, it's been great. I'm really looking forward to it. I read, I read the packet of information and not, I mean, all I can say is, wow, you seem so highly qualified. Thank you. Lots, lots of experience, lots of good stuff. This is my passion. The, the younger ones are where my heart is. So this will be great. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks. Okay. So we are bringing Melissa's name forward as a nomination and we need a vote. So do we need a motion or that's yeah. the motion? Okay. No, you need to you need to make a motion. Okay, can somebody make a motion to I'll make a motion to approve the nomination of Melissa Roberts as Hussey School Principal. All right. And I'll second, second the motion. This is Linda. Linda, thank you. And okay, so roll call Becky Beal. Yes. Linda Corliss. Yes. Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Joanne Potter. Yes. And me, Denise Mallet. Yes. All right. Welcome aboard, Melissa. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> Melissa. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. And oh, wow. uh, um, are, do we do the next one the same way? Yeah. So they, the well, uh, yeah, I'll talk about him. Because <laughs> I don't, unless Audra wants to talk about him, but Probably not. Um, I got to pull up stuff just to be sure I say the right things about. So there was a, so we have um, did a hiring process for the assistant athletic director. Um, there were several candidates, actually, I think they had 10 candidates that came into the pool. Um, they interviewed four that I believe. And um, Aaron Moore, our own very Aaron Moore rose to the top. Um, so Aaron has, um, He's got his uh, major, his, his college degree is in athletic administration. So he has been working towards this role for a really long time. And he's been 
um, participating and supporting in the athletics since his since he's been with us. Um, he's been currently he's employed with us as um, part time at like co game coverage AD that kind of piece of it, as well as he's working in the high school um, as an ed tech three. So this was something that he has been kind of chasing for a while and Aaron Watson and Steve and several other folks coaches were involved with the athletic um, the assistant trainer um, oh my gosh the assistant director interviews and he absolutely was the top pick for everybody involved so. yeah he was so I was I was there and he really oh, was you were? Oh, good, Mike. yeah he was number one in uh, and plus what Aaron's done the last two years, I think has really been impressive. I think he's definitely ready for this. So um, this, this should be good. Oh, now All we right. have an Aaron one and an Aaron two. <laughs> right. That is a true statement. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I am looking, we were nominating Aaron Moore as the assistant athletic director. So we're looking for that uh, motion, please. This is Joanne. I'll make a motion to nominate Aaron Moore as the next assistant athletic director. Thank you. I second the motion. This is Linda. Thank you, Linda. Okay. All right. Um, Becky Beal. Yes. Linda Corliss. Yes. Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Joanne Potter. Yes. And me, Denise Mallet. Yes. All right. Thank you. Okay. More new hires. Um, so I'm going to do, do you guys want to hear about all of them and do a sort of broad uh, motion? Yes. Does that work for you? Okay. So the first one I'm going to talk about is Desiree Labby, who is going to grade two at the Hanson School. And Desiree has her degree from the University of Maine at Orono. She has been teaching grade two um, currently, or no, grade three currently in Steuben, Maine. Um, has, um, is very excited to be joining us here. She's done a lot of student teaching and, you know, all of the pieces in it. So she's a young lady right out of, well, she's got it. She put her, she got her feet wet in one school system and then she wanted to be down here in Southern Maine. And so she was the one who came to the top for us in, in that particular one. Um, Jamie Ray is a, the candidate for the Knowlton School music teacher. She has her bachelor's and her master's both from the University of Maine at Orno in music education. She has 11 years experience. Eight of the last years have been in Newmarket, New Hampshire. So she's been doing all of the, the instrumentals and pretty much she is the Pied Piper of um, New Market right now. So um, she is looking to come to Maine and um, big shoes to fill, you know, following the Pied Piper of uh, the Knowlton School with Chad, but um, she's really excited to be there and Michelle feels really strongly about her as, a, as that candidate. Uh, let's see, Jen Murphy is going to be our fourth grade teacher at the Knowlton School. She graduated from St. Joe's uh, last year, but this past year, she actually was the long-term sub at Northbrook Elementary School for one of our person, our people that were out on a maternity leave. So we have some history with Jen and she's done a great job, so we're excited about that. Part of the reason I think Steve hired her was that she at one point was a manager at McDonald's and that is his favorite place to stop and eat. <laughs> um, believe it or not. And I'm kidding. He probably, you know, who knows? Um, Audrey, do you want to talk about Kelsey? Sure. So Kelsey Davison just graduated with a master's degree from the University of Southern Maine. She just finished student teaching at East End Community School, fifth grade, and student taught also at Ocean Ave, second grade. And we are looking for her for third grade. Okay. Did we have anybody else? We interviewed a bunch of people today. So I think we have one person left that we're waiting to hear from. Is that correct, Jen? And I think everybody else we is, is in front of us tonight. We had, um, there was a 10th grade math position, I believe. I okay. Did, that's on my list. Tyler Anderson? <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Did I miss him? Where is he? He's on the list. He was a late addition. Okay. So maybe I printed my old one because I don't see it. All right, so 
quick, I will Google Tyler Anderson because I don't know this young man. I haven't, like, we split up the hires, so I'm going to pretend. Hold on. I can at least give you the background on him. <laughs> um, yeah, we're in the throes of it for sure. Like, it's, you know, hiring up a storm as we try to get this all done. Uh, search. Sorry. Uh-oh. Let's see. Next. Oh, there's a lot of Andersons in our world. <laughs> there he is. Okay. So Tyler is... My computer's slow. Um, all right. He has his master's in education, which was conferred a couple of years ago, and he graduated from Umaine, he graduated from Umaine Farmington in 08, and he was... Um, got his master's from USM in 2017. He's been working for the past few years at the Maine Girls Academy in Portland. And prior to that, worked at Lewiston High School. So um, I'm assuming top candidate, you know, math, math folks are um, really hard to come by. So I, I don't, I didn't get to meet him. So I don't have a good feel for him that way. But I trust uh, that our administration is putting him forward and I know Steve spoke with him in detail. So put him through the ringer. So I will put his name on the list as well. And I can attest to that because I did sit in on that interview. Oh, so good. It was a very rigorous interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, so Tyler Anderson. All right, is that everybody? Did I miss anybody else? Okay, so we have Desiree Labby, Jen Murphy, Jamie Ray, Kelsey, what's Kelsey's last name? Davison. Davison, that's it, thank you. And Tyler Anderson to put forward to you for new teachers. Can I'll I get them? I'll make the motion, this is Nancy. <laughs> okay, Perfect. thanks Nancy. I'll second that, this is Becky. Thank you. All right, all in favor, Becky Beal? Yes. Linda Corliss? Yes. Lynn Manley? Yes. Nancy Newbert? Yes. Joanne Potter? Yes. And me, Denise Mallet. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Wait, did that just include, oh no, that didn't include the resignations, right? Or nope. did it? No. Nope. I'll do that for us right now. We have no retirements at this point. And two resignations. These are not ones you need to vote on. They're just informational for you. Um, Nina Holland, the North Burke Elementary School secretaries decided to take, step back and actually work on it. She has a home business that she's working on. That's a loss for us. Nina has been a great support and a great face of North Burke Elementary School. Um, but Mike's already on it trying to like recruit and get a, a, a new face of the front. Um, and Bob Hall is retiring from driving. Oh my gosh, he's been here for, I don't even know how many years. It's been a really long time. And um, he is, he's sort of like stepped down in his role as a driver in the past few years. And now he's got, decided he wants to uh, take advantage of the time and just, just step away from driving altogether. So just, we will we'll thank them for their time for sure. All right, thank you. Sure. Um, so under others, um, it's cap and gown, and I'll have an other after okay. that that I tried to give Steve a heads up about, but I didn't know he wasn't going to be here. So Okay. But. So the cap and gown pickup went really well. Kids dropped off all of their equipment, picked up their caps and gowns. I believe that Steve sent out some pictures from Allie. Did you guys get that? Okay, yeah, great. So it was a it was a great it was actually a pretty um, heartening experience. A lot of the staff were there to be able to see the kids and and just kind of give them the high five, well, the proverbial high five from away, and um, try to at least get a chance to to give them their congratulations from there and a lot of signs and things like that. So it really went smoothly and everybody was feeling pretty positive about it gearing up for next week on Friday with the graduation piece, the virtual piece. So just wanted to let you know about that. How about your other, Denise? 
Um, well, actually I actually have one question on um, what you just said. Do you, I sure. think you send out like an RSVP or something for the graduation. Do you feel like you're going to have 100%? Um, um, I would say Allie and I chatted and she felt like they there was 95% of the kids were showing up. Great. And that's... I'm really happy about that. I was really unsure how that was going to play out. Um, we always have a few students who do not attend graduation for various reasons. Um, for instance, my MHA kids, we have six students graduating. Four of them aren't going to the virtual graduation. We're going to do something separate for them, but two of them are. So that's, that's not atypical. Um, so very um, glad to see the number of students that, that are res responding that they're going to be there. Great. Excellent. Yeah. So what yeah. time is that? Oh, Becky, I don't know. I'll give you the more details. I don't have a, I don't, I'm not going to pretend I even know. So, because it's a long, it's going to be a, it's a, it's a stretch of time. So is it going I'll, to will, be like edited down eventually to a broadcast length or? I believe so. That, I mean, Berwick TV is going to be there watching, you know, filming the whole piece and then and then yes they're going to plan on putting something together that is easily um watchable i guess is, is a word to say in the long run they have their cynthia placed and company are putting together a virtual piece that really just covers all of the graduates in a positive way and then the actual walkthrough um is happening on that friday so i will make sure that you guys all get a more specific outline of the day so mm -hmm. that you can you can do it in. Okay. Thank you. Um, so my other it was um, to see if we could get, I'm not really looking for an update on the fall because that would be like a whole other meeting. What, yeah. I'm, what I would like is an, an update on like the process. Like I know there's a committee. Sure. Uh, I, I can actually do that for you right now, Denise, if you want. Okay. But, and then so, also if, if there's, I guess if I could request um, maybe a regular update from the committee, not yeah. we will understand there won't be decisions, but just to sort of understand, um, like I know there was a survey, just there's a lot of yeah. information. So to see if we could yep. get a regular update, I guess. Absolutely. So I'll give you um, the brief version right now, and then we can go from there. Um, we are meeting every Wednesday morning at 8 a.m. There's a large group of us, probably 15 or 20, excuse me, in the, in, the, in the core group. And then from there, it branches out because each of us have one or two subcommittees underneath us focusing on specific areas. And I, will share, I can share that document with you guys because there's no reason not to see it, the work that we're doing. It's basically... Um, we're looking at various options, like fully back in school. What does a hybrid look like? Are we doing remote learning? All of those pieces. Every district in the state is doing the same thing right now in terms of the conversations. But we're really trying to hone in and, and see, you know, specifically, for instance, um, our health folks. So Amy Crichton, who's the director of nursing for the district, she's working with all of the school nurses to develop protocols and plans for putting things in place to just dealing with, for instance, their, typically their nursing's office, nurses' offices are not large enough by standard that they're asking for the CDC right now for more than one, one human being at a time. That's a problem if you have a sick child, right? So those are things that we're trying to like navigate through. Um, we have a transportation program, you know, group that's working on things again. Um, the way that the guidelines are currently with the CDC, transportation is probably the, the stopper of all of this right now, because there's a, um, right now the guidelines say that we can have 12 students on a bus. No. Yeah, so there's a lot, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of like, whoa, what are we gonna do about that? So those are just some of the conversations and the, the, the questions about the workarounds. Um, big problems to grapple with, to be honest with you. And I, I would say to you in terms of, because we don't really know what's going to happen and the guidance from the state right now is um, not forthcoming because really who wants to say anything, right? And they don't want to say anything either. My understanding is but, they did something out last night. Well, 
I do know that Pender Macon um, did put out, uh, she spoke with uh, folks and it was very clearly, they're gonna work on providing remote support and de developing remote units. So that sense came out that we would be looking pretty si significantly at remote for the fall. Um, that's what I, that's the last I'd heard. That is not ideal for any of us. Um, and I do think that one of, one of our goals, regardless of what happens, because the reality of it is, is now that we know this could happen um, at any point, like if, if we, whoever thought this was gonna happen to us, right? A pandemic that says that we can't have kids in school. So now that we know that this actually can happen, we really need to think about remote learning and, doing a, and developing a better product. We have to develop a better product. So we've done on the fly, we've done a good job. But now this is more long-term if we're thinking about it for the future. So I, I don't have a good answer, Denise, in terms of that. And I think we're gonna hopefully get more guidance um, along the way. But, but again, you know, the other piece I would say is as we look at the situations that are, that are occurring across the United States right now and in our own, in our own state, where social distancing is being um, ignored, we will see in a couple of weeks whether or not it does increase the cases of COVID and perhaps, you know, things will, one thing or another, will have some information, right? So, it, but these are the kind of conversations we have every Wednesday morning at 8 a.m. <laughs> as we're thinking about what's next. Um, so we have developed, I think there are probably 12 or 13 subgroups with people and we're including teachers and we're including um, support staff. We're trying to get folks that are interested in participating in talking about how this is gonna look for us coming back in. Um, so, is one of the subcommittees by any chance talking about athletics at all? Because yep, that- Yep, be absolutely. Huge. If we don't have them again in the fall, yeah. I think that's gonna be huge for some high school kids. Uh, it's huge for a lot of kids and it's, it's across the leagues mm -hmm. actually, Nancy, it's oh, not even God. just our, it's, it's through our, you know, our summer rec programs and all the things that are happening there. Yeah, it's, it's huge impact. Um, so yes, athletics is definitely on, you know, Aaron's leading it up and he's got a, a bunch of folks involved with that. So, yeah. Sue, a question for you. Do all our families have access to internet for remote learning? They do. And that is something that we are supporting and with, we have, um, we are paying for it. You know, we're, we're taking care of it through this, the state of Maine has helped with that as well. And we mm -hmm. are picking up the pieces for those kids that are, that, you know, don't have it. So that, and that will have to continue. That will just have to, it, we're, even if we're all back in school in the fall, I really feel like we need to make sure that kids have access at home. Um, in case something changes. So that's my opinion. Well, somebody can beat me up about I it. I agree with you. I out. agree. Yeah. Oh. Um, anything else on that piece of it? Not on that piece. I've, I've got a different question I'd like to ask. Sure. We can change the subject. Yeah. Um, do we need to sign anything for We the do. Okay. How? Is there, is Jen, are you sending us a link? Yep, so Jen's gonna unmute herself and give you the whole thing. Thank you for that, Joanne. It's good that you're around. Well, thanks. Thank you, Joanne. <laughs> I just texted Sue and said, could I please speak of the documents that I sent out? Right. So I created a link for you to go on um, and sign the documents rather than have you come into the office and um, it's through DocHub, which links to your Google account, your MSAB60 Google account. Um, I believe that the way that it works is that, so you all sign in a specific order and I signed a line for each of you. Astrida has the first line, then Denise Mallet and so forth. I believe that once Astrida signs it, then it gets sent to Denise. So she's able to sign the document and it goes on like that. Um, I do want to ask if um, all board members have to sign it or only the ones that were here tonight at the meeting that approved it. Uh, 
So typically That's, it's just the folks that are at the board meeting. Okay, that approve so, it. so what I can do is I will go back onto that document and I will delete the members that are not present tonight and leave only the members that approved it tonight. So Denise Mallet would be the first one that would receive it. And once she signed it, then it would go to Lynn Manley, Joanne. I just chose people randomly. It's not, didn't work. Can I, Denise, am I correct in that? That's what I thought. And that's what I read, Denise. Well, are we, are we talking about me, Denise? No, Denise Van Campen, I'm sorry, Denise. Oh, I have no idea. Denise and Denise. <laughs> I believe that's correct, Sue. I believe only the people can sign the call for the warrant because they are the ones here. But I can certainly check with Bill Stockmeyer tomorrow on that. Okay. So we'll we'll check in with him just to be sure. Um, but I believe, and, and because it's all this remote world, it may be that they make that change, but we'll see. Well, I believe that's the way that I've read it, is yeah. that just the people that are here. Yeah. So if we could sign it electronically tonight or first thing tomorrow morning, so Betty Moore can come in and because her signature has to be a real signature. So right. she'll come in tomorrow morning, sign all the documents, and then tomorrow she will deliver them to each of the town clerks. Okay. So, so why don't you send them out tonight, Jen, in the, with, the, with the five board members, yep. or six actually board members that are here, yep. and we'll, we'll go with that. And then I think that makes, let's just go with what, what we let's just go with what the people are here okay and i emailed the board members my cell phone number so if you're having trouble please call me and i will to the best of my ability help you no, and just to be clear i so astrina must have done it already because i did get it oh uh, and it just so that it i was a little confused um because it came from jennifer white um oh, and I, I it just took me a minute uh that's me too. One of my many names. Um, but other than that, I, I didn't sign it, but I did click on it and it okay. looks like fairly self-explanatory yeah. as far as going through the process. Okay. So, all right. So I'll just delete anybody that's not here tonight. And then if you all would just sign, I appreciate it. So you're resending it. So I'm not, I'm going to leave this one. Okay. It's, it's the same. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's good. All right. Any other others? And was there any other um, public input, Jen? Did anything come in? No public input. No public input at this time, thank you. Um, when is our next meeting? That's a good question, Becky. So we are, we've put on the books a meeting for next Thursday, but we don't really need a meeting for next Thursday. Um, we are going to have our budget referendum meeting, uh, our budget meeting on the 23rd. So I think that's the next meeting. So we don't have, I thought we had one on the 18th. We don't? Well, I, at this moment in time, we do not need one. Okay. If things change, I'll let you know. Okay. <laughs> the only thing that I need to have you guys vote on eventually is the, the, the um the title documents and the the application that we do every year um we're going to have it ready in the next couple of weeks but it can be voted on um the next time we get together so theoretically i could even grab you at the end of the budget meeting on the 23rd so it'll and what it, time what time is the budget meeting on the 23rd i believe it's is it six o'clock I believe it's been scheduled for 6.30. 6.30, okay. 6.30, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, if that's it, can we get a motion to adjourn? I will I'll make, make this is Becky. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second, this is Nancy. All right. And uh, everyone in favor, Becky Beal? Yes. Linda Corliss? Oh, I think she had to. Yes, Linda, Linda had to leave. Um, Lynn Manley? Yes. Nancy Newbert? Yes. Joanne Potter? Yes. And me, Denise Mallet? Yes.
Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Sue. All, All right. right. Good night. See you later. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night.